I've been, uh, in recent set of videos that we've done, related to HTML really, I've taken a severe beating in the latest one that I'm a disgrace to full professors that I don't know what programming language is and, and how it differs from a markup language. And my attitude is going to be, well, I stand by what I say. HTML is a very restricted form of programming language in my view. So we need to justify that and I need to say at the outset that you don't need to see all the previous HTML videos in order to understand this one because it really comes down to something that's actually very fundamental. Um, in the end it comes down to two different styles of programming language that are interrelated but you can differentiate in a way between them and when does one merge into another. And these two ways of doing programming are known in the trade generically as either the imperative style or declarative. Now the one that most of you will be the more familiar with is the imperative, so we'll do that first. This is really just programming as you and I understand it. You take your language of your choice, assembler, Java, C, basic, whatever, and you are required to give a detailed specification of how you are going to do this problem. And as we know, this detailed specification might be simple arithmetic programming statements. It might require going round things in loops. It will certainly require taking decisions. So it will have if statements inside it. So if you like ordinary, straightforward, detailed, nuts and bolts programming is in an imperative style because you say, have to say how you are going to solve the problem. So I'll put how in quotes here, saying that leads you to if for arithmetic statements, whatever you need. So this is setting out how you're going to do something. If this button is pressed, then do this. Yes, yes. And the vast majority of programs that most people think of in, in terms of programming are done in this style. Now, what about declarative then? Well, declarative, it's a more functional style of programming where the interpreter for your language does the details. And actually, one style can merge into another. And I've got a very good example of my own and we've done it on computer files. I wrote a program to do the Ackerman function. I think it's my biggest hit so far, that particular video. And within the function Ackerman, we saw program statements, we saw use of recursion, we saw Ackerman calling Ackerman and all this kind of stuff, and finally returning and delivering back an answer. However, back in the main program where I call up Ackerman with certain arguments and I call up the Ackerman function as the argument to be printed. I don't worry about the implementation details of Ackerman. I just call it up at the end of a big printf statement as I recall. I say declaratively, give me Ackerman, do it for me. I've forgotten the details of how I did it. And if you know this, the whole idea of writing your own library full of functions for a particular job is that you can then work more abstractly and at a higher level. You can say, I wrote those 20 years, I've forgotten how I did them, but it doesn't matter. Do me Ackerman with parameters thing and thing like that. So you see the one can merge into the other as you take a more functional approach. You could argue loosely that every time you use a library of functions that you've bought in from somewhere, then you are becoming more declarative in the way that you use it. So the point about declarative is you don't have to go into the nuts and bolts details. You just ask for what you want and magically it happens. Typical examples of real declarative languages um, are things like Haskell. What are the trade-offs about this? Well, you could probably say that most of these declarative languages don't work on the bare metal like your C program could do eventually. They are interpreted with a layer of software between you and the bare metal. Now that gives you flexibility because the Haskell interpreter can be uh, basically ported to all sorts of architectures. Somebody's got to do that hard work. But then you know that if you take your Haskell program along, you can just run it. You don't have to convert it into a binary. It just runs on the interpretive mode. So it's trade-offs. And 
other things being equal, it's less true now than it used to be, you lose a little bit of efficiency in an interpreter. Whereas, you know, if you refine a thing right down to a hardcore binary, it'll go off like a Maserati, we hope. And some languages, as we know, have um, a compromise here. Java started life as being a portable, interpreted system, but with um, a syntax that was really pretty much like C. But it's notable that now, when you've developed under Java, there's very often an option to say, if you want to compile this and make a real executable binary of it, yes, you can do that. But during development, you get a lot of um, flexibility by just being able to do things and try them out instantly. That then, I hope, has given you a bit more insight into what the imperative versus the declarative approach is. And that's very relevant to discussions of whether HTML is or is not a programming language. We all know point to brackets H1 means give me a heading, level one. Now, of course, I have to show where the stuff that is your heading, the text, ends. But to me, you can say, look, I'm calling up the function h1, I'm giving it the argument, this is my heading, to be done in h1 style, and end of h1 is really just to say, oh, by the way, there's no other way I can signify where my text string ends, it's not semicolon or anything like that. Conventionally, it's end of h1. So, to me, yes, you could think of that as being a function call, in a way. However, some of you really did hit home a bit more accurately, I think, when you said it can't be a programming language, really, because it's not Turing complete. Now, that is a topic. I'm sorry, I hate doing cliffhangers. You know I do. <laughs> That's a topic that we have mentioned from time to time, but it's big enough that we need to do a separate video, really, on that. It's perfectly correct that HTML could never be thought of as a full-blown programming language. It can't do if statements in its raw, vanilla form. There's no way inside HTML that you can say, give me a megabyte more space to work with. It's just not part of the language. Somebody has pointed out, I think, that HTML with CSS does become a very powerful Turing complete language, but you wouldn't want to use it. It's not general purpose. That's another thing. It really is a question of, is it imperative? Is it declarative? This is declarative, but is it general purpose? No, this is really for programming web pages. That's the way I think of it. Uh, and also, like I say, it's not Turing complete. But you can certainly argue that anything that takes tags as if they were function calls and interprets them and does them for you is in some restricted sense in my view, anyway, a programming language. If your first two question. traps, it which we've got here, are for when m gets down to zero and when n gets down to zero, then in the end it will terminate. 